we're going to have to review a reaction that you saw last term. This section is building off reactions that you saw last term. Do you remember how these two molecules would interact? Can you predict what would be the reaction between this molecule and this molecule? some electron pushing errors there. This is one of the standard reactions from your, your last term when you were covering alkenes. Okay, that's a good start. some of the main elements right. There's also some problems with what you wrote down. Who's going to be the nucleophile here? The carbon-carbon pi bond will be the nucleophile. We always, need to we always need to explain why it's reasonable for things to act like nucleophiles or electrophiles, while we simply need to memorize that it's reasonable for carbon-carbon pi bonds to act like nucleophiles. You saw lots of examples in your last term of carbon-carbon alkene pi bonds acting like nucleophiles in electrophilic additions. So when we see a carbon-carbon pi bond, we expect that to act like a nucleophile. Why would we think that the hydrogen here would be an electrophile? Well, that we can explain very straightforwardly based on the ideas that we've been talking about because it has a delta positive. Yeah. Things with delta positives tend to be electrophiles. Good. I think that originally you forgot that we have to treat the bromine here as a leaving group since the bromine here uh, uh, is detaching from the hydrogen. So we have to treat that like a leaving group. These two carbons in this molecule are symmetric, so it doesn't matter whether we decide that the hydrogen is attaching to the left hand or the right hand. But if you put the hydrogen on the left hand carbon, we have to say that this carbon now is a carbocation because it's losing the electrons. This carbon is losing the electrons from the pi bonds. That makes this into a carbocation. Well, the other thing we got from the first step was a bromide anion. And now the bromide can come in and attack the carbon. Well, that's a very reasonable reaction. It's reasonable for things with negative charges to be nucleophiles and for carbocations to be electrophiles. This is, this is not an SN1 reaction. No. Now, SN1 stands for substitution. But this is not a substitution. This is what we call an addition. Addition, addition is when we remove a pi bond. Why is it called addition? Because the way we're removing the pi bond is by adding the hydrogen and the bromine. Addition is when you add two groups to remove a pi bond. Okay. On the other hand, the second step here is like the second step of an SN1. The second step actually is identical to the second step of an SN1, where the nucleophile attacks a carbocation. But overall, this was an addition reaction. This is one of the key reactions from the first term when you were covering alkenes. This is a two-step reaction. You know, maybe I shouldn't have given you this example. This example might not have been realistic. Because of the primary carbon? Good. That's right. So let me save myself here. That's why I was a little bit... Uh, uh, I see. All right, good. Could exist in, well, could exist in, a, in an addition, but not in a SN1, because it, I thought you never saw it when it's connected to it. Yeah, so I don't know whether that reaction I had the board a second ago would even work. Maybe it, it, maybe it wouldn't. So I should have made this secondary over here. Trying to be a little too clever. All right, so I should have drawn it like this so that we never get the primary carbocation. But now we can talk about the other key lesson here, 
Why is it that I'm putting the positive charge on this carbon and not on the left-hand carbon? Because we want to form the more substituted carbocation. One of the things that you learned when you learned about this reaction is that this is called Markovnikov. And Markovnikov means that the bromine ends up on the more substituted carbon. Why is it ending up on the more substituted carbon? Because it's attacking the carbocation, and we want to form the more stabilized carbocation. So when you're attacking an alkene, very often you have a choice between forming a more or a less stabilized carbocation. We should choose to form the more stabilized carbocation. And we bromine should... will always go that way, correct? That's one of that's kind of the characteristics of bromine. When now, actually, I think that's mm -hmm. that is for radical mechanisms. Okay. I think that you're thinking it's bromine is selective in radical mechanisms. Okay. Uh, that actually doesn't apply in this case. It doesn't, uh, so in this case, it's not that this is bromine. The key point is we're forming the substituted carbocation, so any nucleophile oh. would end up over here. It's not the fact, uh, so it's not the key thing here. It's not that it's a bromine, but just that we're forming the more substituted carbocation. The idea of bromine being more selective is important for radical mechanisms. Okay. Let's draw the mechanism for this reaction. Arrows and finished. Now you want to, you don't want to show it attacking here. Who, who where is the who is the bromide attacking? This is what's being formed. So the arrow shouldn't be pointing to this oh, direction. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> right. Well, I always have to ask why the arrows are reasonable. It's reasonable for a negative charge to attack a positive charge. This is really just another example of the same reaction we were looking at a second ago, just this time on a ring. It's our choice whether or not we want to draw this hydrogen or not. We could just treat this like a hidden hydrogen, or maybe it's better to show it. Why did you put the have the hydrogen attacking the top carbon and not the bottom carbon? Because I knew that uh, the, the positive charge is more stable on the more substituted. Yeah, that's good. We want to form the more st substituted carbocation. So you're absolutely right to put the hydrogen on the top carbon so we can form the more substituted carbocation. That's regiochemistry. Regiochemistry there is deciding what region to put the charge in. Is this bromine now, is this going to be a stereocenter? No, it's not. No, it's not. So we don't need to bother putting in wedges and dashes. It's not wrong to put in wedges and dashes. You can put them in if you want, but that's an unnecessary complication here. We're only going to get this one product. And actually, looking at your notes, it looks like your instructor is not focusing much on stereochemistry for this part of the course. So we're not going to really focus much on stereochemistry. But in any case, there is no stereochemistry here because this is not forming a stereocenter. I'm not going to draw this hidden hydrogen in here anymore. Well, anyway, this would be our product. Okay. This is called electrophilic addition. This is a type of electrophilic addition. We were just saying it was addition because we're adding two groups to remove the pi bond. And it's electrophilic because the thing that's attacking the double bond is an electrophile, an electrophilic hydrogen. 
that's attacking the double bond. Well, that's all just review of some important reactions from last term, and now we have to see how does this relate to conjugated alkenes. 